In biology, there's a concept known as the cell theory, which is the idea that all living things on this planet are made up of cells or cell products. So this ranges anywhere from something as small as a bacteria to something as large as a redwood tree. We're all made of cells. They're considered the basic unit of life. By basic unit, I mean kind of like how a brick is the basic unit of a wall. I could build a very small wall out of one brick, or I can make a large wall out of hundreds of bricks. Similarly, a bacteria, which is a unicellular creature, is made out of one cell, while something like me, I'm multicellular, I'm made out of trillions of cells. Now the average cell is roughly 80 micrometers in size. Micro means one millionth, so that's 80 millionths of a meter. If you've seen a millimeter, that's pretty small. Take a millimeter and chop that up into a thousand pieces, then you've got yourself a milli, or sorry, a micrometer. So that's really small. The smallest dot you can make on a piece of paper is huge compared to this. So a lot of times kids ask me, why are cells so small? The answer to that is something called the surface area to volume ratio hypothesis. Now, if you're a cell, the only place for you to get in material is through your surface. That's for you to take in food, or for you to dump out waste. So if we take a look at this cube, let's pretend it's a cell. It has a dimension of one by one by one centimeter. If we calculate its surface area, we find that its surface area is six centimeters squared. If we calculate its volume, we find that it is one cubic centimeter. So if we look at the ratio here, we have a surface area to volume ratio of six to one. That means every one cubic centimeter of cell is able to suck in materials through six centimeters worth of skin or membrane. What happens though if I take this one big chunk and I chop it in half? Now I've opened up the inside and I can get material in through those two new inner faces. So now the surface area equals eight square centimeters while the volume equals still a total of one cubic centimeter. That's a ratio of eight to one. Now it can suck in more materials per second because it's got more surface to do that sucking in through. So let's take a look at some of the basic kinds of cells and see what are the common characteristics that they all share. If we take a look here at this bacteria, we see a number of different structures. But one of the first ones that we'll see outside, uh, once you go through the outer capsule and cell wall is you'll see the cell membrane. That's what acts like the skin of a cell. And all cells on this planet have at least a cell membrane. Once you're through the cell membrane, in this diagram you see this bluish stuff. That's the cytoplasm. That's the gooey liquid that the rest of the materials are floating around in. Within there, you'll see this thing here. That's the tangled up DNA chromosome of this bacteria. You'll also see a number of these little small guys floating around. Those are ribosomes, the little factories that build proteins for the cell. If we take a look at an animal cell, we'll see similarly on the outside, you'll find the cell membrane. It doesn't have the cell wall that the uh, bacteria did, but it does have the cell membrane that again controls what can come in and what can go out. Once you're passed through that membrane, again you have the liquidy cytoplasm, which technically is the entire region from here to there until you hit the nucleus, but most people when they talk about the cytoplasm, they're just talking about the cytosol, the liquid there. Floating around again in the cytoplasm and stuck on the surface of these uh, wiggly things here are the ribosomes to build proteins. And inside the nucleus we have the DNA. If we take a look at a plant cell, we see again a similar structure. We see that cell wall that gives the shape and structure and protection for the plant cell, just like it helped protect the bacteria. We see the membrane immediately underneath that. And then we have our cytoplasm with, yes, you guessed it, a bunch of ribosomes floating around inside. And deep inside the nucleus, we have all that DNA.